Hi, it's Mark Spencer from Ripple Training. This video is about Titlemations. Specifically, I'm in the Titles Inspector. I've selected Ripple Titlemations, and I'm looking at this theme, Graphic Reveal. These 12 templates in the Graphic Reveal theme work pretty much the same way. There are two special instances, the Drop Zone and the Text Symbol one, which I'll cover separately. Here, I'm gonna press X to select a range for this clip. I'll select the Brackets template and press Q for Connect Edit. And if I select it and press the forward slash key, we can see we have an animation by default. It also blurs the background video by default. If you don't want it to blur the background video, in the title inspector, there is a checkbox for that. And you can also choose the amount of blur, a little bit or a lot, whatever you want. Now, there are three on-screen controls. Let's change the text first. I'm gonna double click in here. Command A to select all and I'll change the text. I'm also gonna change the font to just something else. It really doesn't matter what. And we can see now we have a problem with the brackets not opening far enough. That's what this on-screen control is for. A tip on the on-screen control is if you click and hold them, it makes them easier to move. Just click and hold for a second. And you can adjust this ending position of the brackets. This is the same thing in the title inspector as using this graphic end parameter. It doesn't affect the start of the brackets. However, if we go back to the beginning, by default, the brackets start opposite each other and spread apart. If you don't like that, you can change it by using the graphic start parameter. For example, I could have them start like that as a box. That won't affect the end condition. Each one is independent. So now they start that way and come out to that same point and close up again. Uh, this on-screen control down here adjusts the position of the text independently of the brackets, just vertically, because you may have smaller text or smaller brackets and need to adjust it. This on-screen control up here adjusts the position of everything so you can move it anywhere on the screen. I'll undo that. You can also make those adjustments right here in the title inspector. Position all will handle the same thing as that top on-screen control and then title vertical position, I'll undo that, we'll do the same thing as that on-screen control. And they're all keyframeable. Okay, a few other things that we can do on here. I'll come back to the type in a minute. The speed is the speed of the animation. By default, it's medium. You can select slow, hit the forward slash key, and it animates on and off slowly. And then fast, obviously, does it quite a bit faster. Pretty straightforward. Um, Graphic start and end we've talked about. Graphic size, you can adjust the size of these graphics to be very small or very big. And even when they're small, uh, they'll, the mask will still work correctly. Let me make them even smaller so you can see that. So they'll still work correctly. However, when they are real small, you may want to adjust their starting or end, ending positions so they don't overlap. And you can do that easily with a graphic start and end. I'll make those a little bit bigger again. Graphic rotation isn't so useful here for these particular kind of brackets. But with other graphics like stars or boxes or slashes, you can rotate them to look differently. And then you'll probably want to adjust the ending and starting size. You can also keyframe the rotation so that they animate, they spin. Graphic color should be straightforward. No surprises there. Uh, position all we talked about. Title vertical position we talked about. Bracket width, you can make them big and fat. Bracket joint by default is a square corner here, but you can choose a round uh, corner right there or a bevel just for a different style. I'll go to a round here just so you can see it. I'll make it a little bit, make them a little thicker. The start and end caps can be set to different things as well. So they can be round or they can be arrows. And if they're arrows, you can use these adjustments here. It's pretty straightforward. I won't go through all of it. Bracket roundness means the overall bracket roundness. So I can make them more curved and maybe I'll make them also a little thinner. And shadow opacity is just the shadow of everything. So if I crank that up and give him shadow distance and some blur, that's how that works. And there we have some modifications of the brackets. All the other ones work the same. Now you can see because I've changed this, I might want to change the opening where they overlap a little bit. So I can go back to the graphic start and move them apart a little bit like that perhaps. So the top of the title inspector, the type is set to center split by default but you can also choose a slide right or slide left. I'll choose slide right. And now if I select this and press the forward slash key, 
we can see there's a single bracket that moves to the right. By default, it's not going to be in the right position, so we'll click and hold and move this over. And then we can move the entire title where we want. This can be used more as a lower third. It can be used anywhere you want, but it works nicely as a lower third. Notice that the on-screen controls may move off the screen, so you may need to zoom out to see them. In this case, I probably want to have the text be quite a bit smaller, and then I could move this back over, and then I would want to make the graphic smaller, and then adjust the title vertical position to have it match like that. And then I can move the whole thing where I want it and forward slash to play. Now, if you use slide left instead, the on-screen controls move quite far. I assume this wasn't gonna be used as often, but this on-screen control moves way off to the right. So when you position this where you want it, you're not gonna see that on-screen control. So you wanna move it to the left first, find the right position for it, and then move everything where you want it. Since that on-screen control moves way to the side, you could always zoom out more to locate it, but um, it's easier. You can always just drag the whole thing to find it and make your adjustment and then play. So the drop zone template as part of the graphic reveal theme has a few special properties. I'll apply it by pressing X, select it and pressing Q and selecting it forward slash key. By default, it has these drop zones. And what you can do is in the title inspectors, click the drop zone well, then locate a graphic that you want to use in your browser and click apply clip. And if your clip doesn't fit right by default, just double click on it. And then you can freely resize it within that drop zone to be the right size, just moving it around. You can also use these controls here in the inspector to pan and scale there if you don't want to do it right here. And once you're done, forward slash key, and that's set up. And the same controls apply for adjusting where it starts and where it ends up, etc. There are a few other additional controls, particular graphic rotation, if you wanted to have these maybe go out to the side a little bit. And you'll notice when we have two of them that they are in opposite directions. So that can work interesting for a lot of things. For other things, it could be a problem. Um, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Uh, let's go back to the drop zone. I'll click on it. And I'll scroll down to another still that I have of this Ripple logo. I'll click Apply Clip. It's much too big by default, so I'll double click on it and scale it down to fit and pan it over. There we go. And I'll also set this graphic rotation back to zero. And if we play that, it looks great, but we have them in opposite directions, which you may not want or you may not want. Uh, and that's really how this works. So what I'd suggest if you have a logo like this is that rather than doing a center split, you do something like a slide right or a slide left. So if you do a slide right, I'll move everything over and adjust the position of this. And slide right works perfectly fine. And of course, you can reposition, as we talked about earlier, move this anywhere you want, make it bigger or smaller. But if you do a slide left in the title inspector, slide left, then we're going to have that logo uh, reversed. So one way to address that is to take this logo, uh, drop it in your timeline, flip it in the video inspector, and then put it in a compound clip which is what I've done here if I select my Compound Smart Collection and double click this. I just drop this logo in a timeline and in the Video Inspector, um, I, I use the flipped effect. That's another way you can do it. I use the flipped effect uh, in the effects browser and then put this in a compound clip. By doing so, what that allows me to do is to select this flipped logo, click Apply Clip, and then it appears correctly in the animation. Here's a quick tip for a neat little drift effect that you can add to a title. So I'm using the slash back template and I have set it to slide right. So if I play this, we have a little lower third here, but I wanna add a little drifting motion to the entire title. So what I'm gonna do is with my playhead right where it starts to write on, 
Up in the title inspector, I'm going to set a keyframe for position all. Then I'll move to about where it shuts down, right about there. And I'll drag X to the right just a little bit. And if we play that back, we now have a nice drifting of the title. I can adjust those keyframes very easily by pressing Control V and deciding exactly where I want that drift to start and to end. Finally, in the graphic reveal theme, we have this one called Your Text Symbol, which is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is press X, select it, press Q. And by default, it's a set of quotes. And the quotes are intentionally a part and a little higher. So you can use them for making a quote, but they're more powerful than that. And if I double click the title, move the playhead back over it, you'll notice what gets highlighted is this symbol over here. So this is not a graphic, but actually a text object. We can use the arrows in the top left corner to navigate between the main title and the symbol. This one on the left is a clone of the one on the right. Because it's a symbol, we can make this anything that we want. We could type any text, use any font in there, including emoji and symbols. So to show you that, first I highlight it. It's highly by default, but I find sometimes you need to actually go and drag on it again. From the edit menu, I'll choose emoji and symbols. So you can use anything in here as your object. For example, I'll select this heart by double clicking it. And I'll also go back to emoji and put an emoji in there. And I'll close that. Now you'll notice the emoji has lost its color. If we go to the title inspector, by default, all symbols are colorized with this symbol color pop-up here that we can add a color to it. However, if you want it to retain its original color, you could click this colorize symbol checkbox to uncheck that, and then it will maintain its original color. So really useful way to add any kind of symbol you want to these graphic reveal templates. I'll press escape and then move the title up to match these particular objects. All of the rest of the controls in here are the same as what we've seen before, including the ability to have this center split, slide right or slide left.